Hey, welcome everybody. Man, do I appreciate you stopping in on the weekend. I know you've got better things to do, so thank you. I'm John Zanar. I'm going to be your host for Sub Penny Buzz, and this is the weekend. It is January 7th, Saturday. Now, on Sub Penny Buzz, we pretty much do the same thing as we do with On Top and Hot. We look at hot OTC and penny stocks, but we come at it from a different vantage point. Through the week, I'm sharing stocks I'm interested in, stocks investors are watching, stocks that are running on the charts. On Sub Penny Buzz, they are special requests. These are stocks I've been asked to take a look at, whether it be from YouTube viewers, Twitter followers, wherever. I gather them up and I grab some to share with you. Now, I can't look at all of them in one show, but I am trying to do as many as I can. So the first one we're going to take a look at here is WETG Wet Trade Group, Inc. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now this came on the NASDAQ July 22nd through an IPO. They put 10 million shares on the market at $4 a piece. That is a low float and this is a Chinese stock. So this was happening back when HKD, uh, MEGL, two other Chinese companies that IPO'd during the summer with real small floats. They ran hard. Well this didn't run as hard but it did run. When it came on the market it bounced up to $22 and then pushed itself up to $50 and now she has fallen all the way down to 45 cents. Now she did have a little bit of gains on Friday but nothing to get too excited about. Now this company's been doing a lot since they came into the market on the 22nd. Lots of news and I'm going to touch on to some of that for you. So let's take a look at what the company does here. They tell us that We Trade Group Inc. is the world's first technical service provider of cloud intelligence system for micro businesses. It is the first internationalized system in the global micro business cloud intelligence field. To even make it simpler though, I found this over here and I'd like to make this bigger but as soon as I do it goes off the page. So it says We Trade Group Inc. was incorporated in the state of Wyoming on March 28, 2019 and is in the business of providing technical services and solutions via its social e-commerce platform. We are committed to provide international cloud-based intelligence systems and independently developed micro-business cloud intelligence system called YCloud. Our goal is to provide technical and auto billing management services to micro-business online stores in China through big data analytics, machine learning mechanisms, social network recommendations, and multi-channel data analysis. So that's their primary backbone is this Y cloud, this intelligent cloud that they're using for micro businesses, but they're doing a lot more. And I'm going to touch on to that, as I said, as we look at the news. So what was the relative volume around the company on Friday? Not good. She took about a 50% drop from about 1.8 million down to 880,000 shares on Friday. Share structure. Well, this was all wrong, completely wrong. I did go look this up. They said there was 19 million, at least that's what they suggest. Well, when I looked it up, it was 62 to 63 million. So we're a long ways off. But then again, this is a NASDAQ stock on the otcmarkets.com website. Don't count on the information being perfect. It's always worth doing a little extra DD. So we're looking at 62 million for the float on this one. Financials for WETG. Well, at the end of 2021, putting those three zeros behind the numbers down here, they did $14.3 million and got to keep 11.6. On the quarterly, well, let me see. They just came on uh, the NASDAQ here. Now, I'm not quite sure what was going on in the past, so I'm not going to get confused here. But for the last two quarters, they did 1.6 million and then had a huge jump up to 5.3 million. And they've got another quarterly report that is due out right now. And I'd be interested to see if they've been increasing there as well. Now let's take a look at their balance sheet. I'd like to know what sort of cash assets they're holding. Cash assets, they've got 20.2 million in cash assets. Total assets, 44.6 million. If you include their long-term assets, they're up to $46 million in assets. And look at here, total liabilities is only 4 million. 4 million out of 46 million. So they are in a strong position. 
what do we got over here for disclosures? Well, they've actually got quite a lot of disclosures that have come out here recently. All these 8Ks are basically just telling us about news presses that came out. So we can actually just go on over to the news to get all that information. Now the problem is there's too much. There's just way too much information. All this news right here came out since November 10th. They are catching a lot of momentum. They are expanding. They're making new deals. They've got new products. They're going into new technologies. And as much as I would like to dive into each one of these, the best I can do is just give us some excerpts so you can catch up with what's going on. So let's dive on into that news. So we're going to start this off by looking at a news press that came out October 18th. This is basically their first summary. They get us all caught up at the milestones that they've been making since they came onto the NASDAQ in July. So we have already looked at their backbone business, the Y Cloud micro business cloud intelligence system that they launched to serve the global micro business industry. We are talking about little companies, ma and pa businesses actually. China has a ton of micro businesses that support China and China supports their micro businesses in a big way. Another subsidiary that the company just launched was WTPay. This is the company's self-developed global payment system which supports multiple methods of online payment including Alipay, Visa, MasterCard, local e-wallets, and eight mainstream digital wallets in over 100 countries. They're also working with WeChat Pay. Do you know how big WeChat is? They have more consumers in WeChat than we have in the entire populace of the United States. They're that big. Now they tell us down here that the company expects that WT Pay service, you ready for this, is going to meet over 60% of the enterprise collection and payment needs in the world in the world. That is a bold statement. The company plans to start promotion and trial operation of WT Pay in the United States, Singapore, Australia, the Philippines, and Indonesia. They're already in mainland China, Hong Kong, Japan, England, New Zealand. So yeah, they're spreading out across the entire world. Their third subsidiary is Y Health. This is the company's global public health business and it's mainly committed to developing business for biotechnology and healthcare companies worldwide. So there's three subsidiaries right there and they have plans for more. They tell us that the company intends to seek out strategic expansion in hospitality and residential sectors. Since the company believes that the two markets are likely to recover significantly as China eases its COVID restrictions, which is what's going on right now. China is lifting those restrictions and you can see Chinese stocks are starting to run again. They plan to introduce the Y Cloud system to these two markets to further expand the company's business scope. Our next piece of news comes out November 21st where the company announced they had entered into a business agreement with VMade Tech, under which VMade commits to implement the actual operation of WTPay technology tools in Singapore. And for this, VMade agrees to pay the company a total of not less than $120 million over the next two years. Then we have a news press that came out December 22nd. They tell us that the company has been working with Jai King Biomedical and they have reached a milestone achievement. They are selling 1 million units a day of their COVID-19 self-test kit. 1 million a day. They tell us that these kits are 98% accurate and give you results within 15 minutes. The next piece of news comes out on the 28th. They tell us here that the company has entered into a strategic cooperation with Fujian Kunyu Medical Supplies. To date, Kunyu Medical has achieved an average daily online sales order volume of over 50,000 units in Alipay's online store Epidemic Inspection Pass. Kunyu Medical is a company that focuses on the production and sales of medical equipment. Specifically, it has a top-notch production line of rubber gloves in China and currently ranks in the top three in the production and sales in China. 
Notably, Kunyu Medical seized the opportunity to produce productive clothing and sell antigen detection kits during the pandemic by promptly implementing speedy production of medical protective clothing and making possible that protective armors for doctors and nurses and frontline are equipped with sufficient technology and availability. Then we have a real big piece of news that came out the very next day. We trade and Fujian to develop portable energy storage products. We Trade Group entered into a cooperation agreement with Fujian Super Solar Energy to develop a portable energy storage product and distribute them globally. The cooperation also marks the official entry of We Trade Group into the new energy market. Fujian Solar is a new energy product development and production enterprise, and its portable energy storage product, Venus Power, has become popular and sold widely in China as soon as it was launched. Venus Power features high power, versatile adaptability, outdoor LED lighting compatibility, cell phone wireless charging, PD fast charging, and solar panel charging, among others. So this is a whole new sector that they're getting into. They've got cloud, they've got fintech, they've got health. They're looking at hospitality and residential, and now they're into solar power. Then we have a piece of news on January 3rd. The company announced that they had been awarded the strongest potential IPO of the year by 2022 Guru Club, Greater China Best Listed Company Awards. The Strongest Potential IPO of the Year Award analyzes companies' financial scale, profitability, financial security, and market capitalization management. The finalists are announced based on quantitative data analysis by a team of experts from China. So China has already recognized that this company is big and influential. So there's another reason to consider this company. Even their own country likes them, right? And the last piece of news that we have here came on January 6th. We're told here that We Trade Group Inc allies with Hangzhou Parallel Space to develop virtual human technology. This is going to be big, folks. With the rapid growth of global economy, the virtual human technology has become increasingly popular and foreseeably irreplaceable in different industries. The establishment of Parallel Space Intelligent will be a milestone for both WeTrade and Hangzhou Parallel Space as they jointly promote the idea of virtual human in meta universe to the global market and revolutionize the application of virtual human technology services to the global multi-industry sector. Advancing to the virtual human industry is an important step for the company to upgrade its digital technology services in 2023. In recent years, the virtual human application has gone beyond the stage of virtual anchor, interactive entertainment, education and training, government services, and has expanded to other industries. The empowerment and employment of digital virtual humans in the real economy will become inevitable. The company hopes to keep up with this trend and seize the opportunity for an early entrance into the market and to create greater value for our customers and shareholders. They want to work with fake people, virtual humans. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. I mean, you could actually be watching them in a movie and not know that you weren't looking at a real person, but it was a virtual human. And they believe that this is going to be not only popular, but standardized across the world. And I think they're right. So they got a lot going on. They got a lot of companies that are making money for them, selling millions of units of testing kits, tens of thousands of rubber gloves. They're working with solar power and storage units for energy. They have got so many things going on right now, and we just haven't seen the explosion. But I think it's coming. Let's go look at that chart. Yep, this is WETG on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. So can you. Sign up for their free trading account and they'll give this to you absolutely free. And you can use it anytime you like as long as you keep your account open. So this is a six month, four hour chart for WETG. And it is this surge right here when they came on the NASDAQ. They started at $4 a share and in about a week, 
they got up to $23. How about that, folks? You're talking at uh, almost 600% gains. She did fall some, not too far, and then took another huge pop, went up to $50.50, and then came tumbling down real fast, and has been sitting down here for the longest time. Now, what's most interesting here, these huge surges had no volume. Where's the volume? I just don't see it here. But after she fell, we've had tons of volume, lots of volume all through this period. These huge bars here, these are three, four, five million shares being traded in a four hour period of time. So it's not like people aren't paying attention to the stock, it just isn't rising yet. Our technicals on the four hour, not real strong. Everything seems to be taking a break, not moving much on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. Well, that looks actually pretty decent. We've got a breakout going here, folks. You can see the price has been under the 200 all this time until three days ago. She fell from a high 18 days ago of 85 cents down to 23 cents, maybe eight, nine days ago. And ever since that low bubble, she has been pushing up on an incline. Crossed that 200 day SMA three days ago, bringing all of her SMAs with her. The nine day, the 20 day, the 50 day, all three have crossed the 200 day SMA in the last three days. That is a power sign. Our MACD has got a crossover imminent right now, as well as our PPO was pushing up. And you can see our PPO, once it crossed over here at the low bubble area, it has been going up ever since and is not stopping. Everything looks like it's building up strength now on the one hour chart. And we definitely have a breakout going on there. Five day, five minute. So she is climbing over the last five days. We've got some huge jumps and rolls in there, no doubt about it. You can see she gets real close to the 200, bounces off of it. But these last two days, she's been arguing with it. She's gotten under it a couple times. Friday, she fell deep underneath it, hit her head on it coming back up. And right now, she's put herself right back on top of it again. Our technical show, we've got a crossover on our PPO right there. And we are pushing up over to signal line on the right side of our pink line down here on the MACD. And our RSI has jumped from 40 up to 62. Now it doesn't look like she's gonna take off right now. You can see that the 200 is kind of rolling around. Tough to tell what's gonna happen. But I'm looking at this stock for the potential it's got. They're dealing with FinTech. They're dealing with this intelligent cloud. They've got health products that they're selling in China, Japan, Singapore, Australia. They've got this virtual human technology they're gonna come out with and God only knows how big that's gonna be. Personally, I'd be looking for that next financial for the end of 2022 and the next financial for 2023. I think this is really gonna tell the tale. And I think when people see the money coming in, that's when this stock is going to run. I like the potential WETG has. Do your own DD though, folks. I only covered about this much of what they're about. We're now gonna take a look at Shrug, Digger SHRG, Sharing Service Global Core. And this is a company that hasn't had a whole lot of news or filings coming out here recently. However, the last filing they did come out with had some big news. They told us they have already submitted the filings for uplisting to the NASDAQ. They're not just talking about it, they're doing it. As a matter of fact, they've given us a heads up. They are gonna be implementing a reverse stock split to meet the price requirement to get on the NASDAQ. They're gonna be doing a one in 100 up to a one in 1000 reverse split any time between now and March 31st. And they probably won't give us another warning. We've been told. So, Shrug has got a lot of things that they're doing. They do different sorts of businesses, but what they primarily do is invest in other public companies. And I'm gonna share that information with you as we go along. Now, the first thing I noticed when I was looking at Shrug was her chart. It's really thin. Matter of fact, initially I thought maybe they were off the market, but I don't see any of that. It looks like they're on the market, just traded real, thin. The last time they were traded was January 4th and before that was December 30th. So I think she's up there. She just isn't getting a lot of attention right now. The last day she was traded on the 4th, she finished at just over a penny at 0.013 with almost a 14% loss. 
Now they are on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. The B actually stands for better. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. An actual CPA goes through the numbers. With your pink disclosures, that doesn't happen. The management just passes off the numbers to us as they see them. That's it. So these are actual factual figures that have been accounted for that we can trust. It makes them a lot more transparent. The company has those two important green ticks I'm telling you to look for, the verified profile and the transfer agent verified. These are real important, folks. There's a lot of information being validated by these green ticks that is being verified behind the scenes by the OTC market. So if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, especially on the OTC market, you want as much validated information as you can get. So look for those two green ticks. But if you're just going to play the stock for a short swing or a day trade, this isn't going to really bother you whatsoever. Now they've got independent directors. You got to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. So they are all ready for that move. And we got a bonus here. They are penny stock exempt. What this means is they're not a startup company anymore. They're not risky. They've proven themselves to be reliable and trustworthy. And the way they do that is by having millions of dollars of assets over a three to five year period of time where they've had no problems with their filings. So this company has ticked all those boxes. She's looking pretty good. So what does Shrug do? Well, I could read this to you, but this doesn't say hardly anything. So we're going to look at the news and the financial filing. And I'm going to jump into the financial filing right now, but I'm going to have to jump out of the picture because I can't get this thing to fit on the screen with my big head in the way. So let me show you what I found in the financial. So we're jumping into the most recent financial disclosure from the company on December 9th, 2022, this came out. And there is lots of information here, folks. This has gotta be about 140 pages. Don't worry, we're not going through it all. But this is where I found the information about the reverse split and the uplisting. We have applied to list our common stock under the symbol SHRG on the NASDAQ. They've already applied. We intend to complete a reverse stock split at any time before March 31st of 1 to 100, but not more than 1 to 1,000. The purpose of the reverse stock split is to allow us to meet the stock price threshold of the listing requirements of National Securities Exchange. Now, why I'm really here is to show you what this company does. It's kind of difficult going through all the news because most of the news isn't about what they do, but who they're investing in. Where did that go? There it is. All right, so they tell us here that health and wellness products are something they're involved with. The company markets its health and wellness products primarily through the proprietary brand, The Happy Company. The Happy Company markets and distributes its products primarily in the United States, Canada, and the Republic of Korea, and other countries in the Asia Pacific region. Sharing Services also markets its health and wellness products on a not for resale basis to consumers in other countries outside the U.S. Another one of their subsidiaries is their subscription based travel service. Through its subsidiary, Happy Travel Destinations, the company delivers subscription-based travel services. The Happy Travel Services are designed to offer the deepest discounts for travel relating to airfare, cruises, hotels, resorts, timeshares, and rental cars for destinations throughout the world. And most recently, the company has broadened its business model to include company-owned franchise cafes. In 2021, the company had acquired the exclusive franchise rights in North America to the brand, of course, Happy Cafe. Each franchised Happy Cafe store will allow customers seeking a healthier lifestyle to access functional and healthy food and beverages, a pleasant workspace with free Wi-Fi service, physical fitness, nutrition management, and personal workout print and video content along with company proprietary travel services. And as I said, the company does like to invest in other companies directly or through their subsidiaries. The company from time to time will invest in emerging businesses. All right, looking at our relative volume on Friday, it's zip 
remember I told you she hasn't had any trading since January 4th so we've got absolutely nothing on Friday and her average is about 13,000 shares a day not very big she is definitely under the radar share structure all right we've got a variety of numbers here they tell us here that the float is 30, 31 million as of April of this year. Then they tell us up here that our unrestricted shares is about 50 million, which is normally where I get my float from. Well, I'm always searching this stuff out now, so I ran over to Google, couldn't find it. Found a couple numbers, but none of them agreed. Every one of them was different. I found 67 million, 82 million, and 101 million, but I did not find 30 or 49 million. So I'm going to presume that our float is somewhere between 67 and 101 million. Financials for the company. At the end of their fiscal year in 2022, that is March, they did $34 million. Now we know it's millions because they tell us we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. And when we look at the quarterly, we see that they are falling in their revenues. They went from 9 million to 7, 6, 5, 4. And it's just getting smaller and smaller. But I just got done reading the news, and I'm sure you're gonna see it with me, that they claim they are a $100 million revenue company. But I don't see it. Looking at their balance sheet, their assets, total assets, all of them together, $33 million, and all of their liabilities added together, about 30 million dollars. So they are up 2.6 million on their tangible assets, which is better than being in the red. All right, let's take a look at the news. Now, as I said, they've got a lot of news, but honestly, most of the news is not about them directly. It's about other companies. Look at the headlines here. The company congratulates Alpine 4 Holdings. StemSec Corporation receives strategic funding. American Premium Water Corps announces the appointment of J.T. Thatch. That is the CEO of this company. DSS announces letters to shareholders. Moji Life appoints new president. Why are they talking about all these other companies? Because they're invested into every single one of them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's look at the first one. This came out May 25th, 2021. Sharing Services Global Corporation congratulates Alpine 4 Holdings on its latest acquisition of Alternative Labs. Kent B. Wilson, the CEO of Alpine 4, had this to say. As we went through the due diligence process in our acquisition of Alternative Labs, it became apparent what an important and impressive company Shrug and its subsidiaries are to the well-being of Americans. We are proud to blend and manufacture their top quality products and look forward to assisting them as they grow to new levels. So they are working with this company in some way, shape, or form. Here on September 21st of 2021, StemTech Corporation, an innovative nutraceutical company and a pioneer in the field of stem cell nutrition, announced today that it has received $1.4 million in funding from Sharing Services Global Corporation, a leading development company and service provider in the direct-to-consumer space with over $100 million in annual revenues. So here's another company they're working with, and as I said, they claim to be a $100 million revenue company. Company. I just don't see it. Then with American Premium Water, uh, they announced that they had appointed Mr. John J.T. Thatch to its board of directors as an independent director. Mr. Thatch will be the company's fourth independent director. This is the CEO of this company, Mr. John J.T. Thatch. Mr. Thatch has a distinguished 20 plus year career as an executive of public markets. Currently, Mr. Thatch is the CEO and vice chairman of Sharing Services Global Corporation, a company focused on developing platforms for companies in the direct selling and gig economy sector. Mr. Thatch is also the lead independent director of DSS Inc., a New York stock exchange stock. And finally, the very last PR that they've had come out was back in October of last year. Moji Life, a leader in the direct selling fragrance sector, announces the appointment of Christine Wildfield to serve as the president for its company.
The CEO of Shrug said that Christine's leadership skills with top field leaders and her executive experience in the business make her an ideal fit. We are excited to have her as part of a company that we have ownership interest in and will continue to support this growth as they expand globally. And then Christine, the new president of Moji Life, said, I am honored and excited to work with the team at Moji Life and Sharing Services to lead this company which has so much untapped potential. Their patented technology, unique premium sense, and commitment to purity and safety are compelling for everyone. I love the current product range and the exciting roadmap ahead. We envision Moji Life products enriching homes and lives worldwide. So you can see the company's in investing in a lot of other companies, and our CEO, Mr. J.T. Thatch, is director in a lot of companies, so he's got his hands in a lot of pies. You never know what they can pull together and create. So let's go take a look at this chart. It has been thinly traded, but it looks like it's at a low and could be a good time to consider it. So let's take a look at Shrug, ticker SHRG. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here six months ago, just under four cents at 0 .038, and a low bubble on the 27th of December at just over a penny, 0 .013. That is like 66% fall. She did bounce off of that, but she is right back down to that low right now. Now I'm kind of curious, is that a 52 week low? Yes, it is. Price hasn't been this low in over a year. Is that true? Let's go back three years. Look at that, folks. We have a low bubble sitting there for three years. It has not been this low in three years. And back in August of 2020, we had a high of 73 cents. Looking at that yearly, we had a high of eight cents. Coming down to six month, four hour, we're back down to under four cents. And right now we are at that low, low, low. Our technical stink. All of them are pointing down right now, showing that she is not done falling. This may not be the lowest she's been in three years in a few more days. 20 day, one hour view. All right, as I said, this stock has not been being traded every single day. This is a 20 day chart and I think we've got 10, 12 days here. So we got a high back here of about three and a half cents and that low of 0 0.013. She bounced off that low up here to about two and a half cents, hit that 50 day uh, SMA and then fell again right back down to our low, low, low. <laughs> Our technicals are bad, folks. Our RSI is drooping slowly, slowly. Right now it's at 39. MACD is going downhill underneath everything. And here, this is the telltale sign for me, folks. My PPO, that blue line, is coming downhill. The red line, my ADX, is coming up. When I see the two coming closer and closer and closer, I know the price is falling. So it looks like she is still tumbling down. Let's look at our five-day, five-minute. Oh, not very much there. This is December 30th. These three bars, four bars, and this here is January 4th. We went from two cents down to that 0 0.013. Not a lot of information to read here, and it looks like on this chart she is continuing to fall as well. But the company has her fingers in a lot of pies. There's a lot of companies she's invested in, and the CEO himself is part of a lot of companies. And you never know what can come of this. They can bring companies together. They can do mergers, joint ventures. And we haven't seen a hundred million dollar revenue company. That's what they claim to be. So I'm real interested to see the next financial, the one that comes out for 2022 and the first one for 2023. They're probably going to tell us more than anything else. So keep your eye out for Shrug. She does have a lot going on. This last stock we're looking at, someone asked me, what's up with it? Why is the chart tearing it up? And the chart is tearing it up right now. And that's really about the only good thing I can say that's going on right now. This company is in a lot of trouble. This used to be a penny stock on the NASDAQ, but because they did not meet the minimum bid price requirement of $1, they were under $1 for too long, they got yanked off of the major exchange and thrown down to the ocean. OTC. And if, if that wasn't bad enough, the company then went bankrupt, which is where they're sitting right now with the ticker ALNAQ. 
and Q on the end of the ticker means they are in bankruptcy. This is Alina Pharmaceuticals. She finished today on Friday at 0 0.0159, just a wee bit over a penny and a half with 44% gains. She is on the pink limited information, which means that she is late on one or more of their filings. They're late on two, and they just filed the fact that they're late, and it doesn't look like they're going to be catching up anytime soon. Not to mention, we have a grace period mentioned here. A grace period is a countdown. That is 15 days before you're yanked off of the OTC market and put onto the expert market. So if you come over here to quote right here, click quote. Scroll on down to proprietary quote eligibility. Right here, you'll see the grace period, and they'll tell you what the very last day is that the company's going to be on the open market before it's pulled off to the expert market. The only way out of this is to get their financial filings caught up, and they're late on September's and now December as well. They got a lot of problems going on. So what does this company actually do? Well, I found a nice description over here, and it's actually in the very last piece of news that they had. They say that Alina Pharmaceuticals is a biopharmaceutical company leveraging its novel oral biologic platform to discover, develop, and commercialize first-in-class oral enzyme therapeutics for difficult-to-treat metabolic diseases. Alina is currently conducting a phase two program for Allen 346, which has received fast track designation from the FDA for the treatment of hypersemia and gout and the setting of advanced chronic kidney disease. Well, folks, that's great news. I mean, you've got one drug here that's doing three different things. It's working with this hyperuricemia, I don't know what that is, gout, and chronic kidney disease, and they have gotten fast-track designation. That means there's no other drugs out there that can meet the needs, and this drug is doing it so they will get this out there faster. That is really good news, but that is all that they've got going on right now. So what was the relative volume on Friday? Well, nice increase. We've got over 100% jump from 716,000 to 1.9 million. Share structure for this company. All right, they tell us here that she's got an outstanding share count of 122, and the float is virtually the same thing. 120 million are in the float. So virtually all the shares are in the float. There's not very many held by insiders. Financials are desperate. There is absolutely no money anywhere. Let's take a look at their balance sheet. What do they got going on over here? Total current assets are at 17.8 million and total liabilities 14. So they're actually up. They have 3.7 million in tangible assets, but they're bankrupt. They can't meet their filing requirements. I mean, they're in a lot of trouble right now, and I don't know if they're going to come back. Disclosures. We probably got a few of these over here. So this 8K was when they went bankrupt. Uh, this 8K back here is when they got kicked off the NASDAQ for minimum bid price requirement. This NT10Q, just think of that NT as being not, not filing the 10Q on time. That was their last filing they put in in the middle of November for September's quarterly filing. So they haven't made any headway to change anything. We don't see any new information. All we see is the charts moving up. Let's go take a look at those charts. So I've got up two charts actually. We've got up the chart for ALNA before the bankruptcy and we have ticker ALNAQ after the bankruptcy. Each ticker gets its own chart. So this is the four hour, six month chart before the bankruptcy. We had a big bounce here up to 44 cents from 11 cents. That's 400% jump on that last piece of news that had come out on July 29th about that drug getting fast tracked. That's when it came out and there was a lot of excitement there. She came down and had some huge bounces as she was falling, but overall she has ended up down here just about six cents. Now the first day with her bankruptcy ticker, she went from that almost six cents down to a penny and a half. 
a huge drop. Bounced off of that once she got there up to eight and a half cents. That's giving you like 700% run right there. Then she came tumbling back down, hit this low of 005, maybe 10, 12 days ago. And she is starting to run right now without any cause or just reason. She has been moving up for four days here. She started off at uh, 006 and went to a penny six. You're looking at about 150% gains right there over four days. And it doesn't look like she wants to slow down. She's crossed over a 50 day SMA on the four hour chart and looks strong. All of our technicals are hot. PPO has just had a crossover two days ago and is churning and burning uphill. Our ADX hasn't changed direction. That means our trend hasn't changed direction. MACD has had a crossover the signal line and has been pushing up for days. And look at our RSI. It is on fire. 20 day, one hour view. So we had a poke over the 200 back here, but ever since then she was falling till she hit that low bubble. And I mean, it was for about a week she went sideways and then she just started taking off here. Three days of running hard. She started down there, as I said, to the six and got to the 16 and doesn't look like she's slowing up. Every single SMA is following behind the nine, about ready to cross that 200 day SMA. That is a strong power sign, folks. And look at the power in our technicals. All of them are pushing up. We have just a slight turn back on our RSI because she slowed down just a little bit. But honestly, it looks like it wants to continue to run. Five day, five minute chart. You would have no idea that there was a black cloud hanging over this company. You wouldn't know anything negative was going on at all. This thing looks beautiful. She's taken off over 200 here four days ago, and each day she's getting stronger and stronger. She did hit her high today of just over a penny and a half and has been going sideways, looking like she's biding time. She could have easily have just fallen down, but she seems to be waiting for all of these SMAs to catch up to her and give her another push off. Our technicals, ah, they don't look so strong on the five minute. They were strong, they've all calmed down, but right now, this very, very moment, they look like they're changing, like they're like the coin's flipping right now. I tell you what, I don't expect this to continue running, but they're not supposed to run in the first place when you've got that many things going on. This thing has bankruptcy. They're late filing two of their financials, which is about ready to put them on the expert market, where their shares will be pulled off the open market. And if you're invested in this company, you can't do anything until they come out. And the only way you come out of expert is to file your financials. We don't even know if they're going to make it out of the bankruptcy. We really don't. But in saying all that, you might want to keep an eye on this stock tomorrow. It could surprise you. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wasn't exactly framed out properly in that last scene. My bad. Stuff happens. So the three stocks we looked at today were pretty interesting. WETG, you got that Chinese company working around the world with all sorts of industries. FinTech, uh, Intelligent Cloud, Health. They're even working with that new technology with virtual humans, which I am really interested in and I think is going to be hot in a lot more sectors than we can probably even imagine. So WETG to me is worth a watch now and for a while. Then we got Shrug. Shrug really doesn't look to be doing a lot, but they got their hands in a lot of pies. The CEO is an independent director in a lot of companies. This could be the beginnings of some merger, some joint venture, and they claim to be a $100 million revenue company. Is that a fact or is that potential that they're talking about? We're going to be looking for the next financials to give us the answers on that one. And then you've got that pharmaceutical company, which has got one foot in the grave and is flying kites as if it's going to be living forever. I don't know why it's running. We see this all the time. It could run tomorrow again. But remember, folks, this has only got about a week before it's going to be thrown down to the expert market. They're in bankruptcy. They've just been kicked off of the NASDAQ. Things look bleak. So if you're going to play this stock, make it a very quick play, a day trade. Get in, get out with whatever profit you can and consider yourself blessed. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.